From Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa, this is Anchored in Faith. Job chapter 1. I'm going to shorten the story a little bit and just start off with verse 10. You know the story anyway about, uh, about Job and how that... The devil tried him and he, and he stayed faithful. But in the beginning of the, of the book there, we, uh, toward the end of the, of the first chapter, in the middle of the first chapter, it should say verse 10. The devil says, uh, Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath uh, on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Verse 11, But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the, uh, Verse 12, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. But we're going to talk about the hedge this morning, about what uh, it means to have a hedge about you. And let me tell you the very first thing. Know it today. There is a hedge of God built around you. There is a protective force around you. You cannot see. Sister Han cannot see. We cannot see. Your neighbor cannot see. But let me assure you, God has a hedge uh, placed all around you. He has a protective force that is just for you that he has ordained uh, from the foundations of this world to be just there for for you. He knows your peculiarities. He, and I have a few myself. He knows every little thing about you. And he has hand tailored, hand made, hand ordained a hedge around you so you can go on to the kingdom for him. All oh, the devil may attack on every side, but you've got a hedge. He may attack you face, uh, face on, uh, front on, but you've got a hedge. He may try and attack from the rear side but you've got a hedge. He may attack, the devil may attack from the east, but you've got a hedge around about you and you're safe within his folds. We have protection from the Lord, but that doesn't mean the old enemy doesn't try. John 10.10, I'll get to this a little later too, but John 10.10 tells us that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy but talking about the hedge we wrote, uh, read about in, in, in Job chapter 1. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all they hath on every side? We're protected on every side. It's all around us. Uh, I, but as we think about the hedge, I... I uh, uh, on, on, I don't get my sermons off the internet, but I like to research some. So uh, I was, as I was um, researching about the hedge, I just wondered, what does this hedge look like? And I had my idea of a hedge. Uh, they're around, aren't they? Well, uh, the one in your yard is probably just a uh, uh, square. Or, uh, we have one not in front of our house, but the neighbor there. Uh, has a hedge and it's just a, a straight line. They call that a hedge. Well, to me, a hedge has at least uh, goes around something or, or four sides, so that's not really a hedge, that's just a bush. Uh, but um, as we think of, about the hedge, it keeps the enemy out. But as the pictures of this hedge came up on the, uh, on the phone there as I, uh, as I went to Google for my research, uh, it, it showed a square hedge. And I thought, well, that's not right. Hedges aren't, pie, pie is round, but hedges are square. Uh, so uh, I, I thought that, that can't be. But every picture that I got of the hedge, because that was over in Britain, and they do Great uh, Great Britain or England, they do things different over there, anyways. But uh, I couldn't find no American hedges, and it'd probably be the same thing. And I couldn't find no Middle East hedges, which I was most interested in. But uh, the most important hedge is the one round about you. We're going to call it round because it says in one place it talks about the city of God. And, and uh, I have to read my notes here. In Zechariah chapter two and five, it talks about a hedge 
round about the city of God or about Jerusalem. Uh, so anyway, about the hedge. But it showed these real thick, uh, shaggy, sticky, uh, scraggly bushes. A and they were impenetrable. Uh, they claimed that a, that a rabbit, they call them uh, hares over there or, or conies sometimes. But uh, sometimes even the rabbits will try and crawl through and burrow through and they'll get their fur uh, stuck in, in that hedge. They're so thick. They're so impenetrable. They're, they're what they're for. They're to keep the enemy out. Now, most of the time we think about a hedge, we think about sheep. A sheep inside the hedge. And we are the sheep of his pasture. We are his sheep as people of the Lord. We're the sheep of his pasture. As so as we think about the hedge, round about the sheep, they're meant to keep the wool. That hedge keeps the wolves out. That hedge uh, keeps the, the badgers out. That hedge keeps the thief out. So you've got a hedge around about you that protects you from the enemy. The only way he can get to you is if you step outside that hedge. And so as the, as the as the hedge keeps the enemy, the adversary out, it also keeps you in. It keeps you in the place you need to be. I tell you what, right here is the best hedge building tool this world has ever known. It's actually one of the few tools uh, known to man to build a hedge around your life. If you lose yourself in this book, if you study this blessed black back book, it will build a hedge of strength around you. It will build a hedge of faith around you. It will build a hedge of hope and honesty around you. This is a hedge building tool. Find yourself in it daily. Find the provision. Find the strength. Find your hope in this book. It's just not black and white pages and words just thrown together. But it's life-giving, life-breathing, and it is protection as you lose yourself and learn of the one who gave it to us. It will build a hedge around you. That hedge keeps the enemy out, and but it keeps you in. You know your bounds by the hedge that you have built. You'll know your bounds by the hedge, I should say, that God has built around you. Uh, so let God build the hedge. Don't build your own hedge. Don't, don't build your own hedge. Don't think you're so smart. Don't think you're so talented. Don't don't think you're so popular that what you know and do will protect you from the enemy. Don't think you don't need this. Don't think that because you're so special in God's eyes that you've got a hedge like no one else has got. You can't build your own hedge. You can't uh, cut down the hedge that God has built you. You can't destroy the hedge that God has built you. You can't do away with the hedge that God gave you and expect to build your own that will hold a candle to the one that he gave you. He has protection and power for you inside that hedge. Stay in the bounds of this book. Stay in the bounds of what's right and wrong. Stay in the bounds of what God has sent you from heaven through his word. And you'll be safe and protected inside the hedge. When I think of hedges, I also think about, as we think about the sheep, I think about the sheepfold. The sheepfold is only used at night. Thank God that hedge never goes down. It is there day and night. But as I think about the sheepfold over in the Middle East, particularly, as it's only used at night, the sheep wander, and are, as they shouldn't say wander, they are led by the shepherd. Uh, you can't drive sheep, the shepherd has to lead them. And you've got a shepherd here, uh, Sister Han, that's leading you in the right path, and just follow her lead. And as she follows this hedge building tool, we'll all be okay because I know her foundation. 
salvation is right here. But back to the sheep just a minute. That fold is just used at night for the sheep because they feed in green pastures as the shepherd leads them out. And so that sheepfold, as, as they come back at night inside the safety of the sheepfold, in the Middle East, that shepherd will lay himself across the gate. That shepherd will lay down there and protect the sheep. You see, the thief can't come through the gate if the shepherd is right there. I want you to know your shepherd has her eyes open daily uh, for a wolf that might try and attack. She hears from God and she knows when the wolf has come to seek and steal one of the sheep. She has prepared for that day. She has planted herself right here in this book and she knows when someone walks in the back door if it's a sheep or a wolf because God has given her direction. But inside that sheep fold, the sheep are safe because the shepherd lays down there across the, the entrance. And just as our Savior one day came down to this earth, gave himself for us, gave himself his life that you and I could have eternal life. We are safe within the sheepfold. Oh, but don't try and fix your own heads. Now don't try and build your own heads. There's some good books out there. I love to study and I love to read other men's and they're just other men's ideas. Uh, this book right here is the truth. Uh, sometimes they'll write about the truth. They'll borrow from the truth. But if you'll get into this book, it's all truth. You can read other stuff and it's, there's a lot of good stuff out there to study. I've got several study books that I like. Uh, but don't try and fix your own hedge. You see, God gave you a hedge. He built it just for you. When you were a teeny tiny toddler, God started that hedge with you. And it grew as you grew. And you see, it, uh, it expanded. It, it grew along with you as you grew much more mature in the Lord and began to learn about Him. That hedge began to stretch out. And occasionally, your hedge will interact with someone else's hedge. And then it will be more fortification. You see, we're, we should be helping each other to build, uh, to upkeep uh, our hedge. Uh, God has a wonderful hedge builder, but sometimes He sends someone along to bless you real good. This church is a refuge. This house is a refuge. It's a safe place. Yes. It's a sheepfold. It's a hedge, if you will, uh, for your daily living. Don't try and fix somebody else's hedge. Don't try and fix your own hedge. Don't meddle in God's plans, but just let Jesus do, do what he does best, and that's keep your hedge and your house in order. Oh, but we have provision we have help right here in this book but as I start as I mentioned as we interact with each other if we're doing it in a godly manner we're building up each other's hedge. I gain strength from you and hopefully you gain strength from me. But don't try and fix your own hedge. Let the master builder, let the one who ordained the hedge, let him fix the problems. Don't go to a self-help book and try and find something to make your life better. Don't go get a word from the Lord for just anyone who comes along. Oh, there may be a great revival service down the road. There may be a great church down the road. Oh, but don't go and try and get a word just anywhere is what I'm trying to tell you. Let the master builder, the master hedge fixer, if you will, let just hear from God and let him build up that hedge. Let the master work in your life. Uh, don't be I, I was raised in the show me state and I've got a little bit of that show me in me. I want to, I want to see it. I want, I want, I want uh, 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 some acknowledgement. I, I want to, to see things before I believe. And so I've got some of that show me state ingrained in me. I don't know how it all works out, but I'm pretty independent in nature. I want to see the proof uh, of, of things before I commit. Oh, but sometimes you just got to let God build. Sometimes you've got just got to let God do. When I started evangelizing, 
realizing about 15 years ago, I didn't know uh, anything about uh, anything mostly. Oh, but uh, as I started to preach, as I leaned on the Lord and said, Lord, you've got to help me. He did. As I went in the power and demonstration of his word and of the Holy Ghost, uh, all things began to work out. Oh, but any time that I tried to think, well, that worked uh, down the road. I'm going to try the same thing here. It never works. You've got to go with God's plan. You've got to have something new and fresh every time you go. But we began to go out and God began to stretch our heads. And all I tell you is those pictures I saw of the hedges over in Great Britain, it'd be a monumental task to stretch that hedge because they were fixed. They were rooted. Oh, but God has got away. Let's help each other along the way. Let's not tear down. Let's not destroy. Let's not fight and bicker. Let's not be a, a, a dead weight to the pastor. But let's get behind uh, the master hedge builder and let's build a hedge for the Lord. Let's encourage one another. Let's get this hedge built. Let's get it standing up there and build on to it as God leads and encourage one another. But don't fix your own head. Self-help will not work. The enemy wants to steal your joy. Your joy is your strength. The enemy wants to steal your faith. Your faith is what you build on. If you put your faith and trust in this book, in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've got something you can build on. But if the enemy has stolen your faith, he's stolen your strength. You're, uh, he's stolen what you build with uh, for the kingdom. The enemy wants to steal your hope. Uh, have you ever seen an age when hopelessness is, is engulfing our world? Have you ever seen a time when people are living lives of despair? Uh, as I tell you today, there is one step, I believe, past depression, and that's despondency. If you get into that place of despondency, uh, there, there is no cure, I believe, on this side of heaven for despondency. But I know a man, oh, a God man. I know someone, the Holy Ghost from on high. He can take that despondency and turn it into joy. He can take that sorrow and turn it into gladness. Oh, let him have his way in your life. I hope you never fall into that trap. But if the devil has stolen your hope, he has stolen what what keeps you going? Why we come here Sunday after Sunday is because we have hope. We have hope. We have hope. We have someone we can rely on. We've got a place that we're going to. I mentioned last time we was here that Abraham searched for a city that had foundations whose builder and maker was God. We're not doing this just to entertain ourselves. We're not doing this just to take up a Sunday morning. We're not doing this just to make ourselves feel better tomorrow but we have hope we're building something for the kingdom we may not have 200 oh but we're doing something for the kingdom we may not have fancy clothes and fancy cars but we're doing something for the kingdom we may not have a PhD behind our name but we're doing something for the kingdom we've got a hedge all the way around the us, and God has made us something for the kingdom the world may never recognize it the world may never know it, but we're building a hedge. We're building for God. Amen. But the enemy wants to steal your hope. He wants to steal your faith and he wants to steal your joy. When, those, when that music starts playing, the praise and worship, I can feel the joy start rising up right here. Now you're going to say to me, no, your joy starts in your head. It's all in your head. No, that joy starts right here in your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're building something for the kingdom. Whether we got 200 or 20, whether we got 2 or 10, we're building something right here in Oxford, Iowa for the kingdom. But the enemy wants to steal it. He wants to grind it down under his feet. Oh, but he can't do it. Because we have an advocate. We have a savior. As we think about this hedge, there has to be a gate. There has to be a gate. If we were inside the hedge, 
and there was no way to get out. This is touchy ground because I've been telling you all along to stay in the heads. So I don't want to, I don't want to say, let's well, just walk out there and, and get clobbered. But, uh, but there has to be a gate because we, we have to eat sometime. We, we have to have provision sometimes. So God has built a gate in that hedge. But you see, he doesn't. One of my first life lessons was close the gate. <laughs> my dad was adamant about the gate in the front yard. You see, we lived by the highway, and I had a younger brother, and uh, I had a mean sister too, by the way. <laughs> oh, you don't want to hear about that. But the gate, the, the gate was meant to be <coughs> shut. It, we didn't just uh, blast through the... Well, we did. That's, I say, a life lesson. Uh, I, I was... Uh, I, I, was, I was a willful child, maybe we'll say, but, but I couldn't remember to close the gate until one day, one day as, I, as I was blasted through the gate and just left it swinging wide open and my younger brother running behind me, you know, uh, toward the highway, of course. I, I looked bad and back and there was my brother running behind me, which wasn't so bad, but a little, little further back and there was my dad with, with a leather belt coming behind him. I knew that was bad. <laughs> but uh, you see, it was, it was a life lesson. So what I'm trying to tell you, there's a, there's a gate in that hedge, but it has to be used wisely. You see, we don't use that go, we don't use that gate to, to go out into the world and have all the fun we can, can and then, then come back to church Sunday morning and repent of it all and do it again next week. That, that gate is not there for our entertainment. That gate is not there just to make us feel good. That gate is there for our provision. As we step out of the hedge, we're to gather some food for the next day, for the next week. We're to, as we step outside that gate, uh, uh, not out of his protection, but as we step outside that gate, we're to bless somebody else. See, God opens the gate for us and says, you go touch so-and-so. You go say something to her or him. You go bless them. You touch them. God giving you a word that will help them. You see, if God can seal your joy, he's stolen half your life. And so as we step outside the gate, it's not for our entertainment. It's not for our liberation. It's not for our freedom because we're free inside the head, but it's to bless someone else. It's to help someone else along the way. Oh, but the gate is there to use. But it's not there to abuse. Let's move on here just a second. God is so good. If you wake up someday and pastor asks you to do a certain job and you think to yourself, I just don't feel like it. The devil's stolen your joy. If you wake up some Sunday morning and you're thinking to yourself, I just don't feel like going to church today. The devil's stolen your joy. He's stolen your joy. He knows if you come to church, you'll build that hedge up again. That weak spot will be gone. And he can't get in there. If you wake up some morning and your whole life is, I just don't feel like it. The devil's stolen your joy. But you can get it back. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The enemy has come to steal, kill, steal, and destroy. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you wake up some morning in your life and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. He's stolen your faith. If you're trusting the Lord Jesus, you know what to do. You know what to do. You know there's a plan and purpose for your life. If you wake up someday or sometime during the day, you're saying to yourself in your spirit, I don't know what my life is. What's my purpose? The devil has stolen your faith, but you can get it back. Building up your faith, uh, um, building up yourself by your most holy faith. If you wake up someday and your hope is gone, your hope's what keep you going. Your hope is what keeps you going. I don't just live this life because I think there's a heaven. I don't just live for Jesus because I think He's up there somewhere. I know He's up there. I know. He's up there. Oh, looking for that blessed 
hope. It is real. It is there. It is today. If you wake up someday and your hope is gone, you're saying to yourself, I just can't go on anymore. Regain your hope. Looking for that blessed hope. You can find him. He's not far, very far away. If you went out the gate and you can't find your way back in, if that old enemy has somehow tricked you or deceived you, that gate is not very, very far away. Just call on him. Call on him that blessed hope and is soon appearing there is hope we have that blessed hope because we have this word because we know that Jesus gave his life on Calvary for us we have hope so we are never in a place where we say I just can't go on anymore because we have hope in Jesus Christ we can't let the devil steal that from us. Keep your head strong. There's some upkeep to a hedge. Those hedges just don't uh, grow there out of nothing. Somebody plants the hedge. There's a good hedge building course going on right here in this house. You can learn to build your hedge. Build it up right here every Sunday. Except the Lord build the house they that labor, labor in vain. Come here to this house and build the hedge. As Psalms 127 and 1, by the way. Work together for the good of the hedge. You can tear down and destroy or you can build up. There, the Christians shouldn't backbite and, and bicker among themselves. It should not be. Work together for the good of the hedge. Praise will build Amen. your hedge. Amen. When the music starts playing, yeah. where's uh, back there? When the music starts playing, yeah. when the joy starts yeah. beating yeah. from those drum beats, from the guitar licks, yeah. when the joy starts ringing in your ears, yeah. the music, joy will come. Yeah. Praise will come. Yeah. Then it begins to blend into worship. Praise will start the building process. It will keep your head strong. If you wake up some morning and your life is, I just don't feel like it, praise Him. If you wake up some morning and you don't know what to do, praise Him. If you wake up some morning and your life says, I just can't go on anymore, I'm going to give up. Praise Him and you'll go on. Praise Him and you'll keep going. Praise Him and you'll feel the strength in your feet. You'll feel it in your ankle bones. You'll feel it in your knees. And it'll go all up till it hits your brain. And then you'll know the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my hope. The joy of the Lord is my praise. Oh, we have an advocate. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We have a hedge all around us. We have a hedge. We have protection. But that old enemy never gives up. He tries to find a weak place. But you're here today because you know the one who builds the hedge. You see, you have surveyed your hedge and you know God built it. You know what God gave you. You know what God gave you and you look around that hedge and you're happy and free and safe. I used to farm, I used to work on a ranch a little bit and every time we brought in a herd of new cows, they'd walk around the perimeter of the fence. They'd walk that fence and they'd look for holes. Well, the enemy's not inside our hedge, but he's outside and he's looking for a hole. He's looking for a weak place. Don't skip Sunday mornings. That makes a weak place in your head. Don't skip your Bible devotions. That makes a weak place in your head. Don't think you don't need the Holy Ghost. That makes a weak place in your head. Don't think you can do it by yourself. You need Jesus. It makes a weak place in your head. So let's build a hedge. Let's praise Let's worship. Let's build a hedge. I know that I've been saying all along, let the master build it. He did build it. He built you a nice hedge. But some of the upkeep belongs to you. Put your faith and trust in this book. 
Put your faith and trust in, in Jesus, in the Lord, and your heads will never weaken. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.